We can now bring in uh, Cécile Coquet Mokoko, Professor of uh, American Civilization at the Versailles Saint Quentin University. Thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Now, the NRA is hosting their annual meeting tomorrow. It kicks off tomorrow in Houston. Despite this mass shooting, they've not canceled the event. Are you surprised by that? Absolutely not. The very well-known slogan of the NRA is guns don't kill, people do. And their their motto is that if the right people have guns in hand, they will protect the rest of the nation. You just need to avoid having a situation where the wrong people have the guns in hand. You know, I want to bring up a, a graphic which we have about the the donations the NRA gives to high-profile Republicans, uh, people like Mitt Romney, people like Mitch McConnell, uh, Marco Rubio uh, of Florida there, uh, this organization funds a lot to people who want to protect life when you think of abortion rights, for instance. So why is there this dichotomy uh, within the Republican Party? Well, there's at first uh, electoral interest because um, the NRA actually gives you grades and just like in school, when you're a politician. So if you are graded F by the NRA, then the uh, campaigns of your opponents Get are funded. financed by the, by the powerful lobby, and they are extremely effective with their, with their ads. So nobody wants that if they have political sense. But about 57% of the United States want some sort of uh, reforms to the gun laws. Given that, why can't politicians get their act together? I'm talking about Democrats here, not Republicans. Well, you know, Americans are paradoxical people. Mm. When people are polled, they say that they want further gun controls and restrictions. But every time there is uh, a mass demonstration or mass killing of this sort, people rush to the, the, the first store where they can pack more ammunition. So it's, it's a reflex of self-protection, which they believe is embedded in the Constitution, and wrongly so. I don't know if you saw reactions from the U.S. president in the aftermath of the shooting. Yeah, he was very angry, calling for politicians to get a backbone, to stand up to the gun lobbies. He is the president of the United States. Can't he arm twist some Democrats and push through some reform? He's the one who said he's going to reach out across the aisle when he was running. Why can't he do it? Because he's only the president of the United States and with, with poor ratings right now mm. uh, in a midterm year. So uh, you, you don't really have the perfect combination to achieve any kind of reform. So even though he says he wants to have gun reforms, given that it's going to hurt his popularity, he's not going to do it? Well, he cannot because he, have to ha he has to have the support of the Republicans in Congress. And as you know, half of the Senate is Republican and diehard Republican. Mm. And there's also an electoral base that um, the same Republicans at the House and in the Senate do not want to anger. We have other countries in the world. The United States is not the only country who's ever had guns. Other countries who've managed to sort of put more controls in place, get people to register their, their guns with police, for instance. Even that is too much to ask for? Well, actually, both of the shooters in the latest mass killings um, actually passed the tests. Um, they, they went through the background checks and purchased their, their guns perfectly legally. So we have to, to see these, uh, these gun control uh, laws tightened in, in a sensible manner. And with, with red flags really identified, as was said um, just a, a few minutes ago. And the thing is, it's one thing to have guns or want to buy guns, but why would any anyone need an automatic weapon, a rifle, I mean, I don't know what this was, an AR-16 or something. Uh, why does anyone need that? In what universe is that, is that okay to have? Well, you have a, a shift in mentalities uh, taking place right now, um, which has to do with defining what it is to be a man in America today. Um, and recent studies, especially one uh, very interesting article by a legal scholar called Yasmin Issa, um, published in 2019, says that there are three types of prompters in the, that we could identify uh, prior to, to um, these gunmen taking action. Uh, the first of these prompters is um, romantic setback, breaks up, breakups or divorces, leading men to um, uncontrolled expressions of, of um, anger and, mm. and trying to regain self-control and self-empowerment uh, by uh, packing heat and, and killing people. Uh, the second type of, of parameter is uh, financial 
uh, situation, reprimand at work, mm. uh, the idea that you, you are a failure because you underperformed at work. And the, the third type, maybe w which we'll see uh, with, with this case, with Ramos, uh, is that um, they want to pay back because they've been bullied or humiliated in school, typically uh, with uh, homophobic slurs. So one way to regain uh, their, their sense of, uh, of dignity is to show the world that uh, they are actual men. And reading manifestos um, by, by uh, former gunmen who went into these, these types of rampages doesn't help. But of course, um, then you're entering the territory of freedom of speech. This attack in Uvalde, Texas, you know, we had another one just 10 days ago in Buffalo, New York. And even though this, the, the pace of these events keeps, keeps coming to us, you're saying that it's unlikely that things are going to happen, even though there is, seems to be a willingness on now the part of the president? Yes, because when, whenever you couch rights in, in constitutional terms... So what's it going to take then? It takes dissociating uh, the idea that you need a gun to be an American citizen. It takes a history lesson about the Second Amendment, which was voted by people who could not even imagine the type of assault weapons we have yeah. nowadays. So it's, it seems like a, a, a sad scenario because I know that this weekend there's going to be this NRA uh, you know, meeting that's going to happen in Houston, Texas. There's probably going to be demonstrations in front of that event. It's not going to change anything that happens inside, is it? No, because it's a cherished, uh, it's a cherished lifestyle for many rural Americans who, who just love hunting and having a party together. They don't see the connection with the opioid crisis, with uh, the, the drug situation, with the consumption of alcohol. Cecile Akoke at Mokoko, very depressing uh, talking to you there indeed. I'm very sorry. I know, hopefully things will change, but we'll see. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for having me.